everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another Slim and Wild video. I really hope you enjoy this one because the recipes, let me tell you, are so good. If you do try them, make sure to tag me, send me a message, anything, let me know what you think because yummy yummy! But let's get into the video. The first meal I'm going to show you is the fiddl fiddliest, oh my word, that's a bit of a mouthful to say, the fiddliest <laughs> meal like ever. It's not easy to do but it's really yummy. I'm making lasagna bowls, so I've cut up an onion and about four mushrooms. Navaya wants to help me in the next bit. She wants to say something. Chop onion. Oh, good. Chop onion and stir together that was, if you didn't get it. So I've added a chopped tomato and the mushrooms in with some mince, and then added some basil and some onion granules. I don't measure it out, I literally just guess it. I then add some curry powder and sprinkle in a stock cube, a beef stock cube. I add four tablespoons, tablespoons or teaspoons? Um, tablespoons of passata. I think it was meant to be tablespoons, but looking at that, it looks like teaspoons. I don't know. Add as much as you want. And then while that cooks, I'm going to cook eight sheets of lasagna, you know, lasagna sheets. I'm then using a pizza cutter to cut it into four strips. You'll then want to put them in a bowl, like a baking tray thing. Kind of like a star shape, I suppose, and then put a little bit of mozzarella on top. Now this bit, don't put as much meat on as I put on because it w it won't work. You'll see in a minute I get in a strop, I can't do it. It's really, really fiddly. You'll basically want to wrap the pasta sheets around the mince, but you, you have to do it in a certain way. If not, it doesn't work, it doesn't hold together, it all falls out. So here you have it, I'm like, I give up, I can't do it. And then James comes and he's got, he's got so much patience. He's got the patience of a saint, I'm telling you. So he managed to do it and he sort of wrapped it round and then sort of turned it upside down. If you haven't got much patience, I would not recommend. However, they do taste absolutely amazing and they look really good. Like in the photo that I took for like Instagram and that, it looked so, so good. So it was worth it. However, I'm not sure that I would do it again. I'm not sure that James would want me to do it again because that would mean him having to do it. Here you go, just a little bit of a close up. The last one, just to show you a bit more close up of what he was doing. And then obviously do that until you've done all four. You'll then want to cook them in the oven for about 20 minutes and then bring them out and put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on top. Pop back in the oven under the grill for about five minutes or so until the cheese is nice and melted and they look nice and golden. If you use the cheese as your A option, this will be sin free. How beautiful do they look? They were so yummy, but as you've already seen, they were a bit of a handful to make. I just sprinkled a little bit of basil on top of the cheese, you know, for presentation and served with salad. Next, I'm going to show you spinach and tomato rotolo, is that how you say it? Usually it's with pasta, but this recipe is using courgette, like ribbon things. So just grab your vegetable peeler and peel into ribbons. It did take me a couple of attempts just to get it right, to get the hang of it. But you should end up with some ribbons like so. I then just put them on some kitchen roll to get rid of any, you know, extra water. You want them to be dry, you don't want them to be watery. So just leave on the kitchen roll for it to soak all the water up. Do that until you've used the majority of your courgettes and then you haven't got, you know, room to make any more. I've used two courgettes for this and then just cut up the leftovers because I'll use that later on. I then added literally as much spinach as I could get in that pan, literally filled to the brim. Then just cook that until it's ready, until it's all shriveled up and I don't know what the word is, shriveled up and cooked. Once it's cooked, you really want to get out all the water that you can. So add some kitchen roll and try and get rid of any excess water. And then when it's cooled down, literally get it in the kitchen roll and wring it out over the sink. Literally wring it out over the sink and get out all the water. You want it to be as dry as you can get it. Next, you're going to want to cook your courgettes and add some garlic. Add a tin of chopped tomatoes. Mix it all together and then cook for a few minutes. You'll then want to add that to a baking tray. You'll notice later that I did actually swap the tray to a smaller one because I needed it to be smaller and deeper rather than it being spread out so much. Once you've done that, you'll want to make the paste for inside of the, the roll things. Um, so you want to get your spinach and 160 grams of extra light soft cheese. This cheese that I'm using, I'm going to be using it as my A option, so this will be sin free. But get a hand blender and blend it all together. Make sure it's all nice and mixed and like a nice, you can see like a nice paste and then roll them onto the courgette spirals 
like roll the paste on, spread it out and then roll them together like so and then do that until you've done all your ribbons. Then just place them into the courgette and the tomato mix. Place them out all nicely so it looks all pretty and then you're meant to sprinkle with parmesan cheese but the shop didn't have any so we just used normal cheese and just sprinkle just a little bit over the top and then you're going to want to put that in the oven for 20 minutes and it was absolutely gorgeous. James wouldn't even entertain it. He just, he took one look at the recipe and was like, nah. But actually it was, it was so nice. I thought it was either going to be really, really weird or really, really nice. And it was really, really nice. Okay, so next I'm going to show you my little fake away at McDonald's. So I'm going to start off with making the burger. Now we all know how to make a burger, so I'm going to chop up an onion, mix it with some mince and literally just take all your rings off, all your jewellery and just get your hands right in there and get mixing. But I'm going to add some curry powder, some garlic, loads of garlic as you can see. Like I don't measure anything out, I literally just bung as much as I want in some coriander or some basil and then I think this looks like rosemary but I'm not entirely convinced. This was a couple of weeks ago I did this so I can't remember but it looks like rosemary. Then add some mustard powder, I don't like mustard at all but just adding a little bit of this just gives it a nice flavour. Then going to add some pepper and some salt and then mix it all together and then mix it into your burgers. I made six, two each for me and James and then one each for our little munchkins for Nevaeh and Leo. Now I actually did this the day before I wanted them but you can just cover them in cling film and put in the in the oven, not in the oven, um, in the fridge, but in the fridge for half an hour but I actually left it overnight. Now it's time for chicken nuggets, so chop up your chicken into nugget sized chunks. Now get your bread roll, I'm using this as my B option so it'll be sin free and I'm breaking it into chunks into a bowl, don't worry too much about the size of the chunks because you are going to use a hand blender. Now if you know a way of doing this about bread flying everywhere, please do let me know but it got a little bit messy. So blend it all together then add a little bit of curry powder, as much or as little as you would like, a load of garlic, again I used lots of garlic, some more mustard powder coriander or some basil, whichever you have, and then some salt, mix it all together. Here I'm just adding the pepper because I've got to a moment ago and then just stirring it together again. And here you have it, here's your breadcrumbs for your chicken nuggets. Just preparing my tray by spraying it with some fry light. You want to crack an egg open, I actually use two, and then simply dunk your chicken after you've whisked the egg up. Dunk your chicken in the egg and then into the breadcrumbs and then plonk it on your baking tray and do that until you've done all the chicken. I'm sure you've all made chicken nuggets before, it's so easy and they are so tasty, especially with all the seasoning that we used, they're just really yummy. So now moving on to the chips, chop up a, I could say tomato, what's wrong with me, a potato. I actually cook mine in the microwave, I don't boil them like a lot of people do, I cook them in the microwave, we have a new potato or boiled potato set and I can't remember if it's new potato or boiled potato but whichever setting it is I use that. I sprinkle with salt and pepper and you guessed it, more garlic, shake it all together so the chips are all covered and then pop it in the microwave. Oh my god, look at that mess that the bread made. Oh. I'm going to cook the chips and the chicken for the same amount of time for about 25 to 30 minutes. So you want to spray your chicken with lots of fry light, literally like spray it until your hand hurts. And then get your chips out of the microwave and put them in the oven with the chicken. I didn't record this bit but also cook your burgers obviously as well. I cooked them for about 20 minutes so obviously give the chips and the chicken about 10 minutes and then put the burger in. Just look at that chicken once it's cooked, how good does that look? I could literally eat it right now, it's so crispy and so tasty, the kids absolutely loved it too, all of us, all of us loved this dinner, it's so nice. 
So to make it look a bit more like a takeaway, I'll just put on some tin foil, add some garlic to your bread roll, add the burger, some slappy, I call it slappy cheese, everyone laughs at me, some slappy cheese. I think, I think other people call it plastic cheese, I don't know. But add some slappy cheese, some gherkins on top, and then some sesame seeds on top of your burger bun, squish it all down, and there you have it. Some yummy french fry chips, some chicken nuggets, and a lovely cheeseburger. Obviously not quite the same as McDonald's, but it tasted absolutely amazing. Next I'm going to show you bubble and squeak cakes. These are so yummy. Another one I wasn't quite sure whether it would be really nice or weird, but it's lovely. The little ones wanted to help, so here we go. You're going to help mummy. That's it. Good girl. Mummy's got a little helper. Lots of potato there. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of what are they? Potato. A potato. 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 <laughs> How many potatoes are there? One, two, three, four, five. No. Ten, yay! Four. 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 Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Nine. Oh, hello. Are you helping? Good boy. Three. Well Four. done. Four. Potato. Wow. Wow. How many potatoes, Leo? Wow. Say one. One. Leo, what comes after one? Two. Well done. We need to cook them. Cook. Big potato. Big potato. Potato. Okay, so now they've finished helping me, bless them, I'm adding some garlic to the potatoes and cooking them just like I did the chips in the McDonald's a minute ago, shaking them and putting them in the microwave under the new potato or boiled potato, whichever it is, putting them in the microwave and letting them cook. While they cook, I'm going to chop up a leek, chop it up into fine little bits and then you want to cook some cabbage and then add the leek. I added more water than what you can see in the pan as the cabbage cooked because I just decided it needed more water. Add some salt and then what I did was I got some scissors. I decided the cabbage was too big for my liking for the cake so I literally just got some scissors and chopped it up. Like we did with the spinach in an earlier recipe, you want to wrap it in kitchen roll and let the liquid be absorbed. Then get your potatoes and mash, mash, mash. Then get your leeks and cabbage and mix into the potato and then wait for it to be cooled down enough so you can actually use your hands and make it into cakes. So to go on top you want some bacon, so I'm just cutting off the fat from the bacon and then cutting down the middle of all the slices, so out of each bacon you get two slices if that makes sense. Then simply wrap them around the cakes, wrap it underneath. You'll want a sort of crisp cross with the bacon, you'll see what I mean in a second. Look at Nevaeh in the background, she absolutely loves broccoli. Broccoli, peas and carrots are her favourite. So this is them before they go in the oven, them two little ones, one each for Nevaeh and Leo and then two big ones each for me and James. I cooked them in the oven for about 10 minutes and then I did 5 more minutes but under the grill just to crisp in the bacon and then I served with carrots and green beans. We all absolutely loved it. Leo and Nevaeh absolutely scoffed theirs so I'm definitely going to be making this again. It was so so nice. Next I'm going to be making a steak pie. Now I got the light pastry but I didn't actually have it myself. I decided that it was not worth the sins. I'm not a massive fan of pastry anyway so in my opinion it just wasn't worth it so I just cut out the lids and then cut up a carrot and a piece of celery actually there's two bits of celery there and then also cut up an onion and you'll see me cut up four mushrooms I am going to use more than four mushrooms but they were just looked bigger mushrooms so the ones in the pack I thought were small enough for the pie so these were just extra big ones I just wanted to chop in half Add your steak and all your veg to a pan with a little bit of oil or fry light. 
If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I call this woo woo sauce, war Worcestershire sauce. I don't know how to say it. But add some of that, then add some garlic and some rosemary. Again, I'm not measuring, I'm just whacking it in. And then 300 millilitres of boiling beef stock, stir it all together and let it cook for about eight minutes or until the stock has, you know, mostly disappeared and thickened up like so. Prepare your dish by brushing some egg around it, then add your beef mixture in, more egg around the edge and then put your pastry on top. Make a little hole in the pastry, I think it's to let air in and to help it cook. Make a little hole, put some more egg on top, get a fork and make a pretty pattern around the edge. And then cook for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's nice and golden and the pastry has risen. How good does that look? But like I said, I didn't eat the pastry. I just didn't think it was worth the sins. I'm sorry, I can't actually remember how many sins it was, but I'm sure you can figure that out. But that looks so good, doesn't it? So I just ate the insides of the pie. I just had the, you know, the, all the veg and the mushrooms and the beef. It was really, really nice still. I served with sweet potato chips and peas. Last but by no means least, I'm going to show you a really quick and easy Asian barbecue chicken done in the slow cooker. So chop up your chicken into whatever size chunks you would like. The recipe did actually say chicken thighs but we're using chicken breasts. Chop up some spring onions and a green chilli and then get all the seeds out. Then I'm adding some barbecue seasoning, some garlic powder and some paprika into a bowl. Add some salt, add your chicken and stir well so it's all coated. Can you see Leo in the background? So as you can see the chicken is all nice and coated. Simply add that to your slow cooker and now we need to make the sauce. So you need about 250 grams of passata, so I'm using half, about half of the carton. Add some ginger, some garlic. It stopped recording here, but I added some lemon juice, some soy sauce, a pinch of sweetener, add the chilies and stir together so you've got your sauce. Then cover the chicken all in this sauce, stir it together. Then cook on high for two and a half hours. After that time has gone, you'll want to stir the chicken. Now you're meant to add some corn flour, but we didn't have any. So I've added some thickening granules, which little Simmon Wild Rebel Me did not, I don't count that as sin, but I don't sin it. So add that, stir it in, and then leave it for another half an hour, and that will make the sauce thicken up. And there you have it. Sprinkle your spring onions on top, some sesame seeds. I've served with some rice and some broccoli. To get the rice like that, I've actually put it in a whiskey glass and then tipped it upside down. I just think it looks so much better, so professional. So that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned in the video, I don't sin everything that I probably should, but it doesn't affect my weight loss. I never have sort of sinned sweetener and stuff like that, and like the thickening granules I didn't sin. Hello, you come to say goodbye. <laughs> But yeah, it doesn't affect my weight loss, so you can send it if you like, but we don't, do we? Are you going to say goodbye? Say thank you for watching. <laughs> say thank you. <coughs> say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Whoa, you're going to fall. Bye. Say thank you. <coughs> Are you being silly? Are you being silly? <laughs> Are you being silly? <laughs> you being silly? <laughs> <laughs> and as always thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>